Yep, well, good morning. Up here this morning, opening up uh, the greenhouses. The temperatures are finally starting to cooperate with us a little bit. Um, I think it's about 8.30 and um, you know, it's already pretty warm in here. So the thermometer's reading 80 and <clears throat> wanted to get some airflow through here. If you're new to greenhouses and uh, you know haven't been around them a lot, they get really hot really quick. Uh, whatever the temperature is outside, like if it's 50 degrees outside, it could easily be 70 inside the greenhouse once the sun starts hitting the plastic. So early in the morning, it doesn't take long for uh, a greenhouse to warm up. So our particular greenhouse, we don't have any type of automatic uh, ventilation system. We don't have any louvers or fans or anything like that. So we have to really keep a close eye on the greenhouses when it comes to temperature. Um, tomatoes like heat, they like it hot, but, but you really don't want your greenhouse to get above 90 degrees if you can help it. Because once you get over that 90 degree threshold, uh, your tomato plants, as well as any flowering plant, could lose their flowers. They'll drop their flowers off. And you don't want that because your flowers is what produces the fruit on on the vine or on the stem or, or, or whatever vegetable you're growing. So you don't want that to happen. Now we're still in early spring, uh, you know, this beginning of May. Uh, so we've got a little bit of time, but eventually uh, we're going to have to get some shade cloths and put on top of these greenhouses to try to reflect some of that light so it doesn't get so hot in here. Uh, I believe the forecast for the next several days um it's going to be good and even at night i don't think it's going to get below 55 or something like that so probably we're going to be uh just leaving the curtains and stuff on uh the house is open especially uh like on our cucumbers you know they they need pollinators they need bees and flies and whatever to come in and and, and pollinate the flowers so they can produce fruit now i've heard I haven't actually done this, but I heard you could buy ladybugs and stuff and turn inside your greenhouse. Uh, they'll do that. You know, that would be uh, in an application where it's really early and you got to keep your curtains closed. But, you know, we want to keep these curtains open so we can get some natural pollinators out there. Uh, doing this is what we're getting into today is planting uh, some peppers here. We got enough for about one row. And then we've got a bunch of onions that uh, we're going to plant out here in the plastic. <clears throat> we're going to plant uh, probably two more rows of onions and we're going to plant those in plastic. At the same time, uh, we made these uh, hills for onions and leeks. And, you know, ideally we wanted them in plastic as well, but we were trying to get them planted. We'd had them on hand for quite a while and they were getting pretty uh, nasty. <laughs> and, but it looks like they're, they're pulling out of it or at least a lot of them are pulling out of it. Uh, they don't look the greatest. That is one of the reasons that I actually um, picked up some onions to plant. Still have some of those onions in the basement if we run out of what we have up there. We'll probably fill in the rest of the plastic with those and see how it goes. All right, here's our little apparatus that Corey actually made it. Got some ends, old tobacco sticks, kind of screwed in on six inch centers. And then uh, just pushing it down there, making holes in the plastic for the onions. So. Just mind your drip tape when you're doing it. So basically when we're planting them, we stick our finger down in there, pull the dirt to the side, Stick the onion down in there, kind of wrap some dirt around it, and there you go. Time consuming, yes, but uh, it will actually won't be fighting so much weeds by putting it in plastic, plus we got uh, our drip irrigation. And while they're doing that, I'm going to go plant some green beans.
I've got the planter up here. Um, going to make a few adjustments and do a few things differently than uh, we did Last before time we planted. I just put two rows of Lewis green beans and two two rows of Romas, and we planted eight rows. So it was kind of mixed and match, but the beans are they're different beans, and you can tell which is which. The Romas. Your Roma beans are going to be like a flat bean, and the Lewis were more traditional round type beans. So, uh, but that being said, the seed size uh, for the Romas, opposed to what the seed size for the Lewis green bean Lewis green beans are, is greatly different. So you can see, I mean, those are those are pretty good sized beans. I'll put a few out here and grab some of the Lewis. So there's a little size comparison. So the reason I'm going to be planting four rows of the Lewis, then cleaning the planter out, and then planting four rows of the Romas is because of that seed size difference. I'm going to have to change the transmission on the planter so I can plant a higher population of the uh, Roma green beans. There is a setting in the book that says for large edible green beans. so. Uh, I'm going to use that setting, whatever it says for the pounds per acre that we were, they're going for. The Lewis is fine. What we got set it on uh, right now is planting perfect. So another change on the planter is I'm going to be tightening up our closing wheels, the pressure on it. How you do that, you just tighten up this bolt here. Um, I'm going to do that on all four rows. So last time we planted, it didn't seem like uh, the closing wheels were closing up good around the uh, um, rows. That could have been, it was a little tacky that day. Uh, this planter is not uh, the best planter in the world. Um, it needs, it actually needs a lot of love. Uh, so we don't normally no-till with it. Um, I think the springs are wore out. It, it needs a lot of work. I mean, it works for what we do. Uh, if you went to go rebuilding this entire planter and doing all kinds of things to it, you're going to be spending a lot of money. And again, for what we do for as many acres as we plant, uh, it works fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the planter with the Lewis beans and then we're gonna go plant them and then we'll switch the varieties out and all that and then plant the rows. Yesterday, as you probably saw, we got uh, our onions planted. We got some uh, candy onions here, and we got some leeks, which really huh, look pretty rough. But I believe they'll come out of it once we get some water to them, which is what I'm actually going to be doing this morning, is actually uh, hooking up the drip irrigation uh, for these two rows, and probably turn on Mr. Sprinkler to sprinkle these other onions. Now, believe it or not, those onions right there when we planted them looked about like this. So onions are pretty resilient and uh, they will, they'll surprise you. We got our row of peppers planted. This year, uh, we tried a different planting method. Uh, these plants are 17 inches apart and I believe 12 inches apart this way. So there's 17 inches in between the plant and 12 inches uh, going this way. But we staggered the water wheel so basically, uh, there's one plant, you know, that plant is in between those other two. So I need to hook the irrigation up as well for these, but these are all green bell peppers. Do have some jalapenos and some, um, some uh, sweet banana peppers down there on the other end where the tractor is. That particular method for growing peppers is supposed to supposedly <laughs> be preferred if you're planting in plastic and got drip tape because you can irrigate and fertilize them and uh, 
we'll see how that works out. It that's new for us. We also got our tomatoes planted, which uh, they also need a drink of water. Some of them are starting to stand back up. These plants were pretty spindly, and they needed to be planted a long time ago. I believe they'll be okay. Worst case scenario here, it's just uh, like a row and a quarter. Um, we didn't even have enough plants to finish out the, this row here. So probably the first thing on the agenda this morning is getting that irrigation hooked up. Also the squash and the zucchini that's germinated in the, in the basement, those need to come out. Uh, they're getting big. Uh, we need to make some more room. So I'm probably, since the weather's gonna be pretty good, probably just gonna put them in the greenhouse and lay them in the uh, rows in between the plants and we can just water over top of them as needed. And also gotta spray strawberries at some point today or tomorrow. Look at that guy right there. I can't wait to eat him. <laughs> so we're gonna get busy doing some of this and then uh, need to go over. I took the planter over to Kentucky yesterday so we gotta go plant some more sweet corn uh, over there. Sweet corn is up. It's looking decent. Um, the kickoff not looking so hot. Didn't really get a good stand. Uh, Obsession is, is looking pretty good. Uh, you can tell it's got a little cold damage though, but I believe it'll, it'll pull out of it and we'll be fine. All right, so we kind of cleaned this up just a little bit. Ran this straight over here. And uh, we put a T in so I can still go to my water hose here for Mr. Sprinkler. And we've got, we'll have these lines hooked up to these rows. Uh, put a 90 in there just to clean it up basically. It's most mostly cosmetic. It just makes it straight across because it's going to be straight across up there. Uh, this runs down for the strawberries. We got to shut off here. If we want to shut off water to the strawberries, we'll put another shut off in down there so we can divide this uh, two sides to so we can like if we want to water one side, we can water one side or water the other. So probably next is we'll go put that shut off in there and hopefully we got enough uh, hard line left to run up there to the tomatoes. Well, we are irrigating. At least the peppers and the tomatoes up here. We haven't hooked anything else up yet. Uh, probably because we'll move this pipe when we're planting uh, the rest of these rows. I didn't wanna, I mean, we run over with the golf cart and it doesn't seem to have any problems. I've been told you can run over this, but my tractor's pretty heavy and I just, you know, soon not do that. If we don't have to, we don't really have to. So, they're getting a little drink of water. We'll check for leaks, but I think we're good. Still gotta turn on Mr. Sprinkler there. And onions are, they're getting water, so. Good. So we're gonna run down here and unhook the water wheel. I gotta take the uh, 6210 over to Kentucky to plant some. Well, we made it over to the farm and uh, got the planter hooked up, uh, got the seed in it. So we're gonna go and uh, plant eight rows of sweet corn, which is about a half an acre. And you can see the cover crop for the pumpkins is uh, starting to get pretty tall. Now another thing I've talked about in the past, uh, probably one of the last videos you saw from last year anyway, it was why we were going away from using cover crop for our pumpkins. Well, uh, fast forward a year, uh, and we went back to doing cover crop. <laughs> uh, we washed a lot of pumpkins last year and that was not fun at all. So I believe we're just gonna kinda change up our practice a little bit. Uh, this year we're gonna burn uh, this wheat down and kill it a lot sooner before it gets, you know, up underneath your armpits. So when it gets about waist tall, we're gonna burn it down, uh, whether or not we're ready to plant or not. And then uh, then we'll come in and plant uh, our uh, pumpkins 
and then immediately after we plant our pumpkins we'll come in with our pre-plant herbicide and uh or pre i keep saying pre-plant i should say pre-emergent herbicide and uh, that'll keep any new weeds from coming uh, in so that's the the plan we're going to use for this year uh, after we you know do all that we'll, we're either going to roll this field down or we'll bush hog it and uh, the the thatch and stuff will provide a nice bed for the pumpkins i didn't stop in here or i did take a peek at the sweet corn field yesterday when i dropped the the planter off uh, and it is up uh, obsession looks good, but the kickoff, uh, it doesn't look so good, but we'll, we'll go down there and take a, take a gander. Well, I gotta get a picture for, uh, Facebook and Instagram, you know, what kind of YouTube farmer would I be if I didn't... Oh, and by the way, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Warpo Farm. So if you haven't done so, check it out. Well, as you probably saw uh, riding on the tractor coming down through the field, the obsession looks pretty good. I haven't done a population count or anything like that, but uh, I believe that's a uh, that's going to be all right. Uh, the kickoff, on the other hand, uh, when I was out here last night, it's pretty spotty. Um, now, where I planted the kickoff, I originally wanted to work this a couple more times before we planted, but if you remember, the uh, field cultivator broke, the hose busted, so um, I wanted to plant corn that day so we could get it out early. And now, uh, I may be paying for my sins. So we got a lot of grass over there. Apparently that is, you know, the pre-emergent herbicide kills a lot of weeds, but it doesn't kill grass. And I'm not, there's not a lot of herbicides you can spray on top of uh, non-GMO corn to kill grass. You definitely can't spray Roundup. So yeah, we're gonna have to get the cultivating or something out here. Not worried about that up that up there because we can work out again. That hasn't been planted, but anyway, um, yeah, just a, not a not a very good stand. Let's see if we got anything growing in the ground, or the seed is just rotted, or what the problem is. I haven't found any yet. Oh, there's one. Looks like he rooted and germinated, but I don't know. If he's going to make it out of the ground. I will say that that is the risk you take uh, planting early sweet corn. Um, unless you're doing it in plastic, um, it, it's a toss up. And, you know, ideally on most crops, it's like, well, you know, just replant it. Well, you know, <laughs> we've missed our date now at this point. So if we replanted this with kickoff, it's not going to do us any good. Uh, you know, if the stand is so bad, I mean, we're going to give it a week or so and see what it looks like. But if the stand is so bad, it's just not going to make anything at all. I'd soon just disc it up and plant later season corn. And then we just have, uh, corn later on in the season. Um, but the whole purpose of planting it early was to hit that July 4th window or sooner. And, you know, this may not make a thousand dozen an acre like we're used to, but it'll probably make something. And honestly, you know, I see spots that looks pretty good. It's kind of deceiving because it's kind of deceiving too because the ground's not very smooth and there's grass and thatch and stuff out there. Um, we'll just have to see. Uh. clean out the planter uh, normally I wouldn't do that but I got a buddy of mine wants to use it to plant a little a bit of sweet corn himself so uh, I'm gonna get my seed out of it so he can use it tomorrow the weather's supposed to be nice but that uh, that's gonna wrap this one up folks uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you would please it really helps us out and uh, we'll see you next time later